Welcome to the interior of your new Audi A7. I'm going to show you some of the controls you may have known about and some you may not have known about. Starting off with the door then, we have the simple unlock and lock buttons. Click once to unlock and once to lock again from the interior. To control your seat however you want it, there's buttons on the side here. You can go forward, back, up, down, whatever you want. Once you're happy with what you want, press the set button, you'll see it illuminate red and within five seconds press number either one or two and you'll hear a little beep and then your seat setting will be saved. Every time you get in the car, if it's moved, all you've got to do is press your button and the seat will go to however you like it. Just beneath them we've got four electric windows, front passenger and the back ones. To try to lock the back ones there's two locks here, one for each side, one click of it and the back will be locked, windows and doors. To unlock it, simply press the button again. This little dial here is to adjust the wing mirrors. So if I adjust it to the right one, this means I'm adjusting the right wing mirror. I can go sideways, upwards, downwards, whatever I want. The bottom right hand dial then, if you switch it to that, that's the heated wing mirrors. These are good in icy conditions or cold conditions when they're fogging up or whatever you need it for. If I switch it to the bottom left then, You'll see the wing mirrors retract in if you're going through a tight space or a tight lane or even getting in your tight garage this is also helpful to make them ungo again simply put it back to the top and then unfold in their own time just to the right of the steering wheel then we have the lights at the moment they're on auto which means the daytime led running lights will be on all the time but as soon as the car detects low levels of light outside they will automatically switch on the dipped headlights which will enable you to see clearly at night. The, fo the fog lights then are to the left of that. You've got the front and rear. Please ensure to only use these when the conditions imply to. Onto the wheel then itself, we have the nice S-Line Sport wheel with on the right hand side then we have the voice control. One press of this and you can say to the car whatever you want it to do, whether it be play your favorite radio station or call your favorite contact. The phone button then, if you click that, all your contacts will appear on the front dash there. You can scroll down through them and click whichever one you want to call. This little star here then, at the moment we've got it saved to the traffic announcement, so you can turn that on and off whenever you want. At the moment it's off, but you can turn that on easily to get the traffic report wherever you are. This scroller here is the volume scroller, obviously down for less volume, up for more volume. And you can also skip tracks by clicking left and right. So whether that be your favorite album, radio station, whatever it may be. To mute the volume, all you need to do is click this dial in once and click it in again to unmute it. Just behind the steering wheel, we've got the wiper control. To wash the front wipers, push this down. To wash the back, push it up. At the moment, we've got the wipers on auto, which means the moisture detection, moisture detector in the in the wipers on the windscreen will detect levels of moisture on the windscreen and put the wipers on to whatever speed they deem necessary on the left hand side of the wheel then there's a view button at the moment we've got two big dials on but as you can see when I click that the dials will go small and whatever you've selected on the top will appear large at the moment it's telephone but that can be switched from navigation to the radio to even the driver assist journey log, which will show you how much petrol you've used, the temperatures of the car, everything like that. Just beneath that, we've got the scroll dial for that, so you can scroll between, if I'm on the radio section, I can scroll between radio stations and just press this dial in to select another one. Just behind this then, we've got the, the indicators. So obviously left to go left and right to go right. We've also got the lights on this one, whether you want full beams, flick towards you, or flash, flick away from you. Just beneath that dial, so the second dial below on the left, you've got the speed cruise control. So all you need to do to do this, push it towards you, and you'll see the speedometer go up. Set your speed however you want, and it'll leave it there, and you can go whatever speed you want. To cancel this then, all you need to do, push it back, and the dial would disappear like nothing happened. Just below that again then, we've got the steering wheel adjuster. All you need to do, flick that away from you and the steering wheel can come out, upwards, downwards, more in, whatever you want to. When it's in the right position for you, all you need to do, flick that back towards you and it'll stay in 
at once. Just behind the steering wheel, we have the shift paddles. These are for when you're in the manual mode, in sport mode. The plus is to go up a gear, the minus is to go down a gear. However, these will only work once you're in dynamic mode and you switch the gear shift to manual. Moving on to the central touchscreen then, here you can control a wide variety of features such as the radio, the telephone and the navigation in more depth. So home button, we have radio, media, telephone, navigation and all sorts of settings. If I click onto the radio then, we click on source, we can go our favourite stations, we've got DAB, FM and AM. If I click onto DAB and FM, I can scroll down a wide variety of stations and click the favourite one for me click on the home screen again we go on to media now this is where we don't have a phone connected at the moment but once you have your phone connected to connect your phone all you need to do go on to Bluetooth settings device and you see Audi click on Audi and a code will pop up on this screen and on your phone screen all you need to do is press OK or confirm and your phone will be connected when you click on the media button then all your favorite albums, artists, songs, from whatever streaming device platform you choose, whether it be Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, they'll all appear here and you can do the same thing, scroll through them, search for them, whatever you want. Back to the home screen then, we've got telephone. Again, we don't have a phone connected, so we can't use this. But from here, you can scroll through your contacts, you can set your voicemail, you can listen to voicemails, do whatever you want. Navigation then, so as soon as we click on navigation, we can see the map pop up. Here we've got the live traffic report, so just in front of us there we have a traffic jam, that's why that road is showing red. To search for a destination, all you need to do, click search and type in your postcode, city, town, wherever you need to be on the bottom screen here. Also just beneath the typer, we got car parks, restaurants, petrol stations, Audi garages and so forth. This is when you click that, a list of the closest destinations will pop up. So if I click on restaurants, a list of the nearest restaurants will pop up so I can go to the most convenient one for me. Again, we go to the home screen then. We've got the phone apps. So this is the My Audi Connect. If you download the app on your phone, you can sync it through this button here and you can control your car from whether it be your house, from work. If it's a cold day, you can switch the heated seats on from your work or from your house when it's cold in the mornings. If I click onto car itself then, from here we've got Audi Drive Select. At the moment we're in dynamic mode, which means the more sporty mode. It's ideal for drivers who want a dynamic feel for the car and feel every corner and every push of the accelerator. Auto, this is best for everyday driving. It's the most efficient and comfortable mode combined into one. Comfort then, this is the mode with the heightened suspension so you won't feel any of the little bumps on the road or anything like that. Efficiency mode, this is the mode that's best for the environment so it'll give out less gases up into the atmosphere. You can also have an individual mode which you can tailor all this and make the ride bespoke to you. Favourites then, so you can choose a favourite screen whether it be your favourite radio station come on, your favourite contact at a certain time, your favourite destination, whatever it may be, you can save a favourite screen. Settings then, there's a wide range of settings for you to fiddle with and choose from. We won't go into too much detail now, but have a fiddle with them and make the car completely personalised to you. Again, with all these, we've got the Audi Connect app. We don't have an internet connected at the moment, but when you do, you can have sync your calendar with your phone. You can look at the news, the weather in your current location. You can even buy stuff for the car. Anything you want is all on this screen here. So when you first open the car, these three will come up. As Again, you can change this to however you want it. So at the moment, we've got media, telephone, and navigation, the three main ones that you really want on there. So that's the first screen done. Moving on to the second screen then, this is where the climate control is controlled. At the moment, we've got low here but this can be adjusted by literally pulling this out and swiping all the way up. It goes all the way up to 28 and high, all the way down to 16 and low. Again, it's a three zone climate con control. So you can have it on all three. You can have it 
getting a bit loud. You can have it on all three or one or two, whatever you want, whether it be middle, top, bottom. And that can be done the same with the passenger side. The, in the middle then we have to control how, how much air you want to blow out the blowers. So at the moment we've got it on low, but that goes all the way up to seven. AC max is obviously the max amount of air that can be blown out at the one time. The circulatory button then, if you click that, the car will only use the air that's currently inside the car. This is good if you have hay fever in the summer when there's lots of pollen outside, it will not be using the pollinated air from the outside, it will just be using the air that is circulated within the car. On the bottom right then we have the heated seats. There's three settings to this, so if you click it once, it'll go on the hottest. Click once to go down, and once again, three clicks, and it'll turn the heated seat off. That's the same for the passenger side. If you want the whole climate control to go off, simply click the off button, and it'll turn off. Just above this screen then, we have the power button for both screens, so if you click this, the display will turn off, and these will both turn black. Just to the left of that, we have the spoiler. If you click that button and hold it, the back spoiler will go up and you'll see a little red line above it to show you the spoiler is up. To retract the spoiler then, all you need to do, press and hold again until that red light goes off. Take your hand away and the spoiler will go in. If you click this button here, the parking sensors will come on. So whether you're reversing, going into a parking space, and you're not sure where the cars are around you, press this button and the parking sensors will be activated full time. Speaking of parking sensors then, click this button, you'll hear a beep and the cameras will come on. We have a 360 degree camera in this car, which means whether you're going reversing out of a space, reversing into a space, driving out of a space, the whole car will be covered. Obviously don't rely fully on this, look around your surroundings as well, but this is a parking plus package that will help you park wherever you need to be. The right hand button then is driver assist. So you can have maximum basic. The maximum puts the 360 degree camera on at all times when you're reversing, as well as the parking sensors. The basic just puts the parking sensors on and the 360 degree camera when you turn it on. Obviously the start stop engine button. Put your foot firmly on the brake to start the engine. When changing gear as well, make sure your foot is firmly on the brake. So at the moment we're in park because we're stationary and not moving, but we've got reverse, neutral, and drive slash sport. So when you're in dynamic mode, like I said earlier with the shift paddles, shift this down and left, and you'll activate the manual transmission. When you're driving, simply press the plus button to go up a gear and the minus button to go down a gear. Again, this is another parking brake button as well as the one on the gear stick. Lift this up and the parking brake will turn on. In here then, we've got two cup holders with a 12 volt power socket. This is covered as well. You can have it covered or uncovered, entirely up to you. Moving down then, we have a storage compartment. In here, we have two micro USB ports, which you can connect to your phone to activate Apple CarPlay. Speaking of phones, we have a wireless charging port. So when you're driving, if your phone's on low battery, simply put it on there, close that and carry on with your journey like nothing. At the top then, we have the lights. These lights are actually touch center activated. So if I press that once, the light will turn on, press it again, it'll turn off. That's the same for the driver and passenger side. If I click this button on the right here, that means every time I open a door, the light will turn on. Simply turn that off if you don't want it on. The left hand button then, this will turn both of the headlights on. Again, illuminate red when it's on. If you want it off, press it again and it'll turn off, simple as that. 